Claims and accusations are exchanged as the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, deals with allegations of corruptions. And as societies begin to open up for COVID-19 lockdowns, what will be the Nigerian, what will Nigerian judiciary look like post-COVID-19? This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeide. Welcome back to Still Plots Politics. A former acting managing director of the Interim Management Committee of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Joy Nunye, has accused the Minister of Niger Delta, Gatswi Lopabio, of fraud. The exchange was in at the weekend following revelations at the ongoing open investigative hearing by the Senate regarding the alleged reckless spending to the tune of 40 billion naira. The media war, however, recorded a twist over the weekend as a former media aide to Nunir Donu Kubara switched allegiance to the minister. Joining us to discuss this is Alester Wilcox. Good evening, Alester. Good evening uh, uh, for having me. How are you doing? I'm great. And we also have Captain Beach Johnson, who is also joining us from Apuja. <coughs> uh, Captain Beach, good evening. But let me start with you, Alester. Uh, what do you make out of this drama? I know you're a Portacourt boy, and we're talking about what is happening in your region. Uh, and don't let me bore you with the, the reason behind the NDDC. And do you think this kind of revelation has anything to do with um, the interests of the people? Um, thank you very much for having me. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm right now in a bad one. Uh, that's why you're having that. It's like the network is not very clear. I'm okay. presently in the bad one. Uh, so just manage the network the way you see it. Okay. But back to your question. Um, when I saw what is going on in NDDC, I was not only taken aback, I was, I was flabbergasted, if there's any word like that. Uh, because if for any reason, and NNP, uh, and, and, and NDDC has been a cesspit of corruption since that organization started in 2004. Is it 2004 when, when, when uh, President Obasanjo established that NDDC? To think that under the new dispensation where um, there is a committee, an uh, entire management committee set up by the president in order to address the happenings, the previous happenings in NDDC, and this same uh, uh, situation rear up its head in NDDC again. That shows that it's either something is wrong with us as individuals or something is wrong with the entity called Nigeria. I could not imagine under any guise of strings of imagination that in 2020, we could be having this wild cat revelation that has taken place as to what's happening in NDDC. It's shameful, it's regrettable, and to, to make matter worse, the, the, the reason for state of NDDC, which is to bring about social uh, development, social and economic development to the Niger Delta, to the, to the regions that develop, that, that produce oil, has been relegated to the background, and everybody is feeding fat on NDDC resources. The major tax of what they're supposed to do, providing water, providing roads, healthcare system, educational facilities, all of this has been related to the background, and what you're having is says speak of corruption, corruption, and corruption. It's for me sad okay. as, a, as, as a Nigerian. It's for me regrettable as somebody from the South South region, from, NDC, from one of the NDC states. It's quite unfortunate and very, very appalling and okay. reprehensible. And Thank this you. should not just go unpunished. Hairs must rule and person was because they were accountable. Okay, they are uh, uh, we'll, we'll speak more specifically to issues now. Let me go back to Captain Beach Johnson, and probably I should also establish it here, that Captain Beach Johnson is from Imo State, and uh, by default, uh, uh, Imo State is part of NDDC. So, uh, Captain Beach, I know you've been following the development in NDDC. Uh, does this come as a revelation, or this is just 
a kind of gutter fight that may not hold any substance? Well, uh, Kayo, they thank you for having me. Um, as, as you are aware, I have been on this NDDC matter for some time now. And the reason why I pick interest in NDDC is because it affects me directly as someone who is from the Niger Delta. I know sometimes when you tell people that, look, you're from Igbo State, and you're, you're from the Niger Delta, they don't seem to understand it. But the truth of the matter is that there are, there are some local government areas in Imo State that border River State. And so we share everything in common with the people of River State. Look, what is happening in NDDC is a disgrace. It's sad. But the truth of the matter remains that if we really want to solve the problem in NDDC, we have to find a way to deal with politicians getting involved in the affairs of NDDC. Now, if you look at the interim management committee that was set up by Mr. President, it could have been for all good intent. But the truth of the matter is that the dramatic personnel involved in that interim management committee have been the same people who have created the culture of corruption in NDDC before this time. If we want to truly, truly solve the problem of NDDC, this type of people should not be hired to become anti-corruption czar in NDDC. A commission of which they have had so much influence over the years. The former governor of Akwaibo State has welded so much influence in NDDC that if we talk about corruption in NDDC, it is very difficult to explain it out that there is no way he had contributed in the corruption in NDDC when he had nominated the chairman of the board, he had equally nominated a managing director, he had equally nominated state representatives to the NDDC. So that is the problem. Do you have issues with someone who is in charge, taking charge of what is under him? And if you recall some of the things he said during the hearing, is that I was a governor, and most of these things have been done by governor and not NDDC. Can we look at the message and probably for a second, ignore the no. messenger now? No, you can't ignore the messenger in this instance. If the messenger had been someone who had not played any part in the NDDC, that would have been a totally different scenario. Okay. If you want to fix the problem of NDDC, you have to bring in someone that is completely neutral. Somebody that had never, ever get involved in the activities of NDDC, either by way of asking for contracts or nominating people to do contracts on their behalf. That is only when you can get to the bottom of this matter. And let me remind you, before this time, NDDC was not under the supervision of the Ministry of uh, Niger Data Affairs, Agreed. which, in my opinion, has not even done better than the NDDC. Okay. That Ministry of Niger Data Affairs in question is characterized even with more corruption than the NDDC. Okay, Captain, it's not uh, that we are not talking about that. Captain, it's and a, we it's will a... talk about the Ministry of Niger Data Affairs very soon because he has equally failed to deliver on his mandate to the people of the Niger Delta. Okay, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. You've raised another issue. Let me go back to Alester. Alester, he, he, we had a case where the NDDC was reporting directly to the presidency. And even that time, the complaint never, you know, slowed down. So is it a matter of things getting worse or they should revert to status quo? where NDDC reports directly to the presidency and not true to the ministry. Uh, thank you, Kayo. The, the bishop has raised a lot of critical quest issues, which are very germane to this discussion. NDC reporting to the presidency, it reports to human beings, not to ghosts, not to anybody. It does not report to the president himself. It reports to the presidency, so it must be somebody that will still act, either the special advisor to him on the president on NDDC affair or whatever. So it is still human beings. 
My problem is, what is wrong with Nigeria? Sincerely, I wept yesterday. I wept, and I've not and, and I've not recovered from my shock. If and this is like let them report to the, the presidency, let them report to then the, the minister of the Delta. So long as they are human beings that are corrupt, that are in that are inimentally inimment, corrupt, that has never had respect for public accountability. So long as those persons hold sway in any of the strata, I tell you, no matter who you report to, and the system is weak to check them and to bring them to justice, no matter who you report to, you to be the same thing. When it was going to the presidency, what happened? That was when we had scandals upon scandals on how a senator has about 300, about 3,000 contracts for which money they are paid and it was not done. Okay. We're not bringing to the presidency then. Okay, when let's, let's, that's when we had let me, let me ask how contracts how, from the first chairman, uh, Oyama, uh, with the first managing director, uh, this, this former MD of Shell, that, this former man that worked in Shell, the same story has got. It's just that people are so unaccountable to their, to their country. People are so unaccountable to their conscience. And because the system is so weak, the process of seeking justice and education is so clumsy that people think they can do things with impunity. Look, it is so. And until we change that system, and involve a system whereby people will be made accountable right on the spot. People will face justice right on the spot okay. of any infraction. People will not be scared. Let, let, there, is too much, there is too much at stake in NDDC. Thank it's you so much. NDDC's problem. Uh, Alistair, NDDC has always been... Alester, I, I, I truly believe that, that you were so about this. So much resources were input, it should ask you to, to account for it. Alistair, I, I sincerely believe that you're actually weeping about this issue. But let's speak pointedly now. Um, without yeah. probably in clear issue, the woman believed that she was unjustly removed, that she meant well for the region. Do you believe her story? You see, without... I've, I've, I've had the opportunity of listening to the two sides of the coin. I've heard from the woman, I've heard the Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Joy Nunes part of the story, I've had a bit of a story. Yesterday on Nanda's channel, I saw um, uh, Senator, uh, no, uh, Honorable uh, Cairo Jugo, Dr. Cairo Jugo, came on and was not defending anything. Rather, he was invoking sentiment, invoking uh, his age, invoking sentimentality, defended nothing. As far as I'm concerned, that program I, I watched yesterday of Cairo Jugo was so much a disgrace that she did not address, he did not address anything. So I believe he was speaking for the minister. So let's assume, let's concede that I, I want to believe Joy Nune to the level of 40% of what she has said. I think it's 30. And Anna Fabio, if I should believe Joy Nune to the level of 40%, I'm not even, let me not go over 40%. The level of 40%, then uh, 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 Minister Fabio should be ashamed of himself. And, uh, and I'm saying this with due respect to every, 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 every norms and every, uh, 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 what, what I would call every decency. If I should believe Joy Nune, to the level of 40%, then Akpabio should be totally ashamed of himself and is not worried to hold okay. an office. Don't forget, uh, uh, Senator Akpabio uh, uh, was the governor of Akwaibom State. So much fleas, so much okay. uh, uh, allegations against him when he was the governor. He was even invited by EFCC. How he escaped all those, I don't know. And now we'll come back to that. In a, in, uh, in and probably I should also put it on record, this is not the opinion... This is uh, not the opinion of Plots TV Africa. It's it's uh, a list no, no, no. we call. I'm coming somewhere. I'm just. Opinion. I'm just trying to. Listing, it's my I, personal opinion, uh, Kayode. I I'm I agree so with you. Can you can you point. give me can you give me a chance to explain what I meant? I just want to state it clearly to okay, our viewers right. that this is not the opinion of Plots TV Africa. It's entirely your opinion, and to also put it on record that we've reached out to the minister to have his take on this. We've reached out to. Uh, uh, Madam Joy, we've reached out to Cairo. We'll expect that if you're watching, they'll have some explanations to make to Nigerians because this is in the public glare and we want them to respond. But let me quickly uh, hear Captain Beach on this issue. I I'm trying to look at the substance of the argument. What did you, dis what can you decipher? Because this is still mere accusation. Yeah, sure. Uh they are mere accusations, but you know that there is no smoke without fire. In the midst of all these accusations, the truth lies somewhere. Now, if we are truly honest to ourselves, 
and we want to get our institutions right. I don't want to believe that there are no good people in this country who can get our institutions in order. My co-panelists had made case that, look, our institutions are very weak. They have been unable to hold people to account. And I completely agree with him. We have to strengthen our institutions. Our institutions should not be built around individuals. Our institutions should be able to self-perpetuate themselves, regardless of who comes on it. The problem we have is that we have strong personalities and very weak institutions. Otherwise, look at somebody like Goswil Abadio, who, like my co-panelist has already mentioned, is supposed to have been facing some investigations by the EFCC. And here he comes. He has been appointed not a minister of Ministry of Niger Data Affairs and a supervisory minister of NDDC. Let me tell you, Kayode, I come from oil producing community, and I can tell you that the Ministry of Niger Data Affairs cannot come to my state and point to one project they have commissioned. The only project they started in my community is Skills Acquisition Center. That Skills Acquisition Center has been abandoned for over a decade now. Now, there are only two local government areas in Imo State that produce oil. And it's on their behalf that Imo State is part of the Niger Delta. But do you believe that because of corruption in the Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs, that in 2019, out of the 22 projects that was meant for Imo State, not a single project was cited in those two local government areas. Do you know why? Because of corruption. Because of corruption, politicians okay. colluded. Okay, Captain we Nich, I, 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 because of time, let me quickly minister. get... Sorry, I'm so sorry, our time is fast spent. No thanks to technological failure. But let me quickly get your last take before I go back to Alesta to round up this segment. A lot of issues have come up before this time, beyond these two uh, dramatic personnel. We've had issues of, oh, the Niger Delta is being deprived of what belongs to them. 13% looks not enough. A Ministry of Niger Delta was created. We have NDDC. And technically speaking, the derivation they have seems to be more than 13%, even when they are asking for 50%. But is it okay to conclude that the problem of Niger Delta is Niger Delta leaders themselves? Well, let me, let, let me tell you, to be honest with you, I think I've written about this in the past. The problem of Niger Delta is 60% Niger Delta and 40% the federal government. Because the federal government has refused to be the supervisor that it ought to be. So you find people from the Niger Delta colluding with those who are outside, who are from outside the Niger Delta to deprive the Niger Delta what belongs to them. Okay. Look, the problem there is not a matter of throwing money at the problem. Because even if you give them one trillion dollars, they will still go the same way that the current allocation is gone, mm. straight to the drain. So we have to first and foremost deal with the core issues, which is threatening the institutions and making sure that these institutions are holding people to account, no matter who that person is, no matter what their political affiliations are, hmm. they should be held to account. It is only when that happens that we will not begin to solve the problem of the Niger Delta. Thank you so much, Captain Beach Johnson, a social commentator, and I should also say a former U.S. Marine for your intervention on this issue. Thank you so much. And Alesta, please, I'm sorry, you have just 30 seconds to go on a home stretch. What do you think is the way forward? Uh, Captain Beach has said most of what, uh, what is in my mind, accountability. And I think I, uh, it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is shameful for the president that stands against corruption, that is a corruption uh, 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 ambassador to the entire world, to appoint people and give them responsibility, to appoint a minister and give him responsibility, and that minister will go and begin to defy his office. I'm not at taking everything that, that uh, Joy Nune said, but I want to believe Joy Nune, because she's somebody that goes to NDDC, and she wants to sanitize NDDC. But because you have the likes of Karo Jubo, some other persons in the board with her, 
and the minister who has been a governor that already knows the policies of NDDC. I'm sure she was trying to be stiff. I think she's been penalized for not playing ball. All this issue about the uh, NYC, about this subordination, for me, they are smoke screen. I want to believe by 40 percent, not considering that the minister or the Kano Jibo do not have a valid point, but if I should believe Joy New Nepal up to 40 percent, then the president has a lot okay. of work in his hand. I sympathize with the president. This is a man that is fighting corruption with all his blood, and the people he puts in charge to help him are the people that are bringing him down. There are decent people to be appointed, but unfortunately, these same people cannot make it to the limelight. And okay. those that have the opportunity to make it to the limelight, they are the ones disgracing the president. Thank you so much. How can you on earth spend 2.3 billion on Laza FIFA in the Nile Delta? What kind of license for Laza FIFA is that? How can you spend okay, 1.5 billion on Palestine? On COVID Palestine? There are so many dirty things happening there. And I'm so ashamed that this country can go on like this. The president will be sit up and look for better men to okay. have him. All these ones he has now, they are all opportunists. They will drag his name down and to the mud. And at the end, his enemies will laugh at him. These men do not wish well for the president. And I think if they do okay, well, Alexa, then this country will go I'm sorry, I have to end it here. I, I will have to, uh, I will have to interject. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I don't know whether I should call this an intervention or a lamentation. But whichever way, let's hope that the uh, right things will be done in the days to come. If Thank this man, much, if we this man and this woman, and because our country, please let me finish my statement. For this if these characters are found wanting, or if any of these characters is found wanting, let's hope that this issue will not be swept under the carpet. Thank you for your time. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, what would the Nigerian bar look like after COVID-19? Even during this COVID-19 era, we'll be right back.